everyone, this is your boy, Doug Kenny. Here we are again on Tales from the Rails, a little bit differently as we're interviewing via the phone. Today we have Kevin Dale and my coach and mentor, actor Andy McPhee, with us. Hey guys, how you doing? Hi guys, hello. <laughs> right, mate. And uh, we'll just let everybody know that Kevin and, and Doug will end up putting up a little map um, when we get this out. Um, Kevin lives in Corn, uh, it's a little country town. Uh, up, how far from out of Adelaide is it, uh, Kevin? Uh, about 325, 330 kilometres. Yeah, right. So it's quite a ways out. Yeah, um, we're trying to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, Kevin's um, got an interesting story. So uh, we'll just hit it off from back in the day. Uh, Doug, you can start off with a few questions and then I'll dive in. Yeah, so Kevin, uh, tell us a little bit about your model railroad that you're known for. Well, I, I, obviously I was a professional railway person there and uh, here in Australia there, uh, our railway uh, system was being quite badly decimated. They were closing lines and bloody getting rid of people, so I decided that I would build my own little one there to sort of uh, <laughs> keep the finger on the pulse, you might well say. So I, I've had an interest in lathes and mills and welding and all sorts of things there. So I started building my own locos and I've built three and a half steam engines. So I say half because I've still got my one half finished. So, um, and, and I needed a bit of track to run on it there. So I built a railway over on the first property I bought here in Corn. And uh, unfortunately, divorce meant that that was going to get pulled up. And so I saved, saved the rail and I gave half of it to a neighbour of mine and we put our heads together there and some money and we put this track in now. It's uh, about 2,000 metres of track on the ground and uh, and it's a point-to-point -point railway. So it runs from my place in a balloon loop up to Bob's uh, and it's 1.65 kilometres long. Wow. And he's, he has he has a turntable up there to turn the locos and things and a nice big yard that you can run around and store things on it, etc. And uh, and so yeah, we we put our heads together and we built this railway now, and we've done it for people of like interest who, who also build build rolling stock and locomotives for them to come here and actually have a run away from the public, which is uh, which is a good thing really because uh, it, here in Australia your public liability insurance if you're going to open to the public is horrendous, so uh, it would never be profitable to do that. And plus the regulations where you have to have things fenced off and certain distances between your structures and things there would make it uh, very expensive to actually have it open to the public anyway. So we're not doing that. Well, man, it sounds like, Kev, it's like a, a really big project. How long did it take you to you know, get that up and running from start to you know, where you are now? Well, if we sort of condensed it, there are about five years. Wow. There's uh, 23,500 sleepers, nice. all hand cut and all hand slotted for the rail to go into. Wow. Um, so how did you uh, make that? Well, the rail is just flat bar, uh, 8 mil by 25, which is 5 16 by uh, inch. And uh, on, on its edge, put into a slot in a, a sleeper by the plastic all wood. Uh, and it holds the rail up there, and it actually works quite well. It's a shame we can't have a photograph of it there, but if uh, our other friend here is going to send you some of the uh, footage yeah. of it here, we'll get an idea. Yeah, Trev's going to, who we interviewed last week, yep. and, um, I said to you next time you're up there, uh, just do a little bit of a video footage of you and Trev together, or a couple of the other boys, and and can yep. Trev can see the tenants as we just added on to the platform, you know, you guys maybe just waving at it saying hello or something, you know? Well, well, that's right, yeah. But I, there, there, there's two other blokes that come come here as well that are uh, railway men. Uh, they've just retired, actually, from Rio Tinto over in the west. And they're pulling, you know, 30, 40,000 tonne trains over there. And they're, and they're model engineers as well. Oh, wow. Well, actually, you know what I reckon? Does Trevor Mildy know one of them? Yeah, we all know one another. We're all good. Uh, I think he's uh, connected me up with one of those guys. Um, Doug and me are going to actually set up an interview. Yeah, John John Lyth is a good one for it. There, his name. Uh, uh, and uh, you've got uh, John Meir as well, who 
it was in the railways there in South Australia here. It was, it was the fitter. Yeah, it was white. It was white spirit, <laughs> which wasn't terribly 